Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It is Friday, January 31st, and we've got a special treat today. First of all, we've got three quarters of the entire company right here, sitting in this room. <laughs> For the first time ever, we've got Nick Birch, in from Sarasota, hanging out over on the right side of the camera. Hello! There he is. That's me. Soak him in, because you'll never see him again. <laughs> well, maybe every <laughs> once in a while, every once in a while. We've got Vedanta behind me. She's here to say hi. Hi, everybody. Happy <laughs> Friday. But uh, yeah, it's gonna, we're going to have a good time. Uh, Nick is here. We're, we're shooting a brand new course this weekend on Procreate, how to use Procreate. And so we thought in celebration of that, I'm going to be doing some Procreate for you today. we got some new software that allows me to draw on my iPad and mirror it up to my computer and we can blast it out to you guys. So that's what we're going to be doing. There it is. There's my iPad and uh, I'll be working on that today. And uh, this weekend we are shooting that course. So we're really excited about getting that out to you. We should have it all shot by the end of the weekend. And uh, however long it takes to edit it, uh, that's gonna be either on Nick or Dustin's lap. And then, uh, then we'll get it out to you guys. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll definitely ha have it out in February. Um, uh, one of the things I wanna mention to you before we get started, uh, and I've been talking about it the last couple of weeks, is our live workshop that Ronnie Williford and myself are going to be doing uh, in Sarasota, Florida. It's going to be March 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. We're really excited about it. we have uh, a little over halfway filled right now. It's filling up pretty quick. And, uh, and if you want to get a spot, it's limited. So we're limiting it to 30 people. And um, uh, it's going to be in, like I said, Sarasota, Florida, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th of March. It's going to be a watercolor plein air painting course, and so we're going to be hitting all different spots all over beautiful Sarasota, Florida, right on the Gulf Coast. We're going to be at the Ringling Museum grounds. We're going to be at Selby Gardens, uh, which is a beautiful botanical gardens right on the uh, Sarasota Bay. And we'll also be going out to Lido Key, which is one of the barrier islands off of Sarasota, and we'll be doing some stuff out there as well. And we're working on some other, pro uh, maybe a few surprises here and there. But um, like I said, it's going to be very, very cool. If you're interested, go over to creatureartteacher.com slash SRQ, and you can get more information on that. And uh, uh, it's going to be awesome. So like I said, um, you know, we did our, our July live workshop in England, in Manchester, or Chester, England, at the Peckforton Castle for four days there, and it was a huge success. We sold out on that one. And uh, so this time we wanted to do something a little closer to home. Uh, maybe a little more tropical, <laughs> and so that's what we're doing this time. Um, and also, too, if you want to go over to our pro, our our um, our, uh, our procreate, yeah, we, no, we, <laughs> Patreon, Patreon. <laughs> There's a P word. I don't you, know. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> I shorted it out. Go, uh, if you want to help us out over on Patreon, we really appreciate it. Every little bit helps us over there, and uh, when we can get our donations, it allows us. To, it gives us more time to go in and do uh, more videos, more artwork, more teaching, and uh, and so thank you if you can go over there and help us out. And uh, depending on what tier you're at, if you're at the top tier, you're going to get an extra uh, live stream each month geared towards you guys. And uh, actually, we're due for one, I think. So uh, we'll be we're doing one. Due. What's that? We're, we're past due. Oh, we're past due. So we're going to be doing one very soon. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what else? Uh, these have been hitting pretty well. I just figured I'd promote it. I don't usually promote the YouTube channel. I know many of you are watching on YouTube, but for those of you that aren't, go over and check out my YouTube channel. We just posted a few videos, uh, 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 a couple of videos on drawing hands and whatnot. And, um, and actually, I get a lot of people ask me if I have a YouTube channel, and I've had one for six years now. Uh, but anyway, uh, the last couple of videos have been hitting pretty, pretty solidly. And so I just wanted to promote those and, uh, and let you know that they're there. So uh, if you haven't been over to my YouTube channel to check out my Aaron's Art Tips and all that stuff, go over and check it out. It's, Aaron, it's uh, uh, YouTube slash Aaron Blaze Art, right? Yep. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, I think we're good to go. So as usual, I've got Dustin in the studio with me, but not as usual. We've got Nick Birch over here, and both these guys are going to be fielding questions. And uh, instead of Nick, Nick writing in like he usually does, he's going to be able to ask me live and when in person. I am still typing back to people. I am multitasking. All right. <laughs> Nick is good at multitasking. So, so Matter of fact, we just got all this all set up in the last 15 minutes. So he's pretty amazing. Who would say it's a, a, a live Deep Thoughts with Nick Birch? That's right. It's a live <laughs> Deep Thoughts with Nick Birch. 
Deep All Thoughts right. with Nick Birch. All right, let's get to the iPad screen. So here we are. We're on the iPad. And uh, I was just going through some of my imagery. Uh, I just did um, a bear. Well, let's. I'll, I'll show you some of the stuff I've done in the last couple of days on iPad. This is one. Uh, I just did this uh, last night and today, just sketching. And one of the cool things you can do with uh, Procreate is um, all the brushes that I've created uh, for for uh, from Photoshop, I can import into Procreate now. It's very, very cool. Also, Procreate has an animation program in it as well, which I'm not going to get into today, but I will be getting into it on the course. And, uh, and I'll probably do it in future streams. But um, this, it's pretty cool. And I'll um, uh, show you some of the other ones here. This is kind of a fun one that I did uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I just got back, Vedanta and I just got back from a wine tasting tour in California. We were with our friends Sarah and Alex Cooper Schmidt. Alex Cooper Schmidt's another Disney animator. You might know his work as he's the supervising animator of Stitch from Lilo and Stitch and and uh, Coda from King of the, or from Coda, Coda from King of the Elves. Coda from Brother Bear. Uh, <laughs> Alex is a wonderful animator. And, uh, and we just got to spend the weekend with him uh, tasting wine. Nice. Yeah. So so anyway, these are a few of the images that um, that I've been able to create in Procreate uh, over the last week or so. And uh, this was a goofy one. I never posted it. But it was just something I was messing around with color. And uh, it's just really gross looking. But I figured I'd post that. I'll uh, show you that. It um, reminds me of that lizard from uh, well, Fern Gully that was trying to eat the human. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that's that what that, that face was. He was voiced by Tone Loke. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So there we go. So here's a bl black leopard that I never finished, Maybe. I just started working on. Um, one of the things I love about Procreate, well, first of all, before I ever worked with Procreate, I was working in Photoshop. And uh, so my brain, uh, and, and Painter. So my brain is kind of wrapped around that. And one of the wonderful things about Pro Procreate is that it's taken kind of those things that I know and they've adapted that. So it's not a huge leap if you're familiar with Photoshop or you're familiar with uh, uh, Painter. Um, it's not a huge leap going over to Procreate. And also if you're just starting out with Procreate as your only digital medium, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's easy to get started. And um, one of the great things about it like you can do in Photoshop is work in layers and then there's different blend modes for each layer and so that's important for me. So I haven't really had to make a big adjustment coming over to Procreate in the way that I approach digital painting. I do it exactly the same and what's wonderful is that I bring my own brushes over and I can use my own custom brushes. Although their brushes are great as well, um, I can I can use my own. And someone's asking uh, who did the, uh, the, the one with the woman with the purple hair? Uh, the let purple me go back. hair art, art piece. The purple hair, this one? That yeah. is Vedanta. Vedanta was goofing around with it. She had some, there's some really cool like watercolor brushes that she's using in here. If I blow this up, you can see it's like an ink brush. It's really, oh, yeah. really neat. And uh, yeah, when we were going to California, Vedanta was using this and uh, doing some fun stuff with it as well. Here's a, she was drawing a coffee cup that was sitting on the, on the, on the uh, shelf, on the well, on the the tray on the on the plane. So um, there's a crab that she was doing. So very fun stuff. So uh, so today, um, first of all, here's the layers. And with the background, you know, it, as a default, the background comes up white. But then I can click on the background. It doesn't allow you to draw in the background, which is cool. You know, just it, we're in Photoshop. You know, a lot of times we mess up and we draw in the background. But I can go around and I can change that background color just by moving, you know, my the the two color choices. I can move the around the the wheel as far as what uh, hue I want, and then I can with inside I can go uh, to the pureness and the darkness and lightness of the hue. And so you know, you guys know I like to start on a gray background. You so do. I do. And so there's that. And then uh, we'll go to our, our main drawing layer, and there I can drop down to right about here. And this is what's cool. So here are, these are the regular brushes that you get with Procreate. There's sketching, inking, drawing, painting, 
whatever. But here are my brushes. I, I, I brought in my custom set of my original custom set uh, that I have for sale on my website. Uh, this is, you know, I brought those in right there and I brought, there's one brush that I customize and I just brought that over and I like using that to draw with. Uh, and then I've got my regular, you know, my regular brushes here. This is a, this is that pastel C draw brush that I always use um, to uh, to sketch with when you guys were watching me. I just want to point out that we're going to be making some of your brushes available with the Procreate course when that comes yes. out. So yes. I don't know. If oh, that's the other thing too. Yeah. In case you didn't hear what Nick said, we're going to be making some of my brushes <laughs> available with the Procreate course. So that'll be re really cool as well. And how much does Procreate cost <coughs> the, uh, the app itself? Nick, so is it seven dollars or something? No, no, I think it's like twenty. But I'll, I'll oh, okay, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, it's it's a fraction of getting an, an Adobe Suite. And by the way, some paying, yeah, and, and it's and it's a one time cost. It's an app, so you're not paying a license or anything. And somebody mentioned uh, on here that today is actually I was international. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. But it turns out today is actually International Zebra Day. International Zebra Day. Yep. And so somebody was uh, asking if uh, you would like to do a <coughs> zebra today in honor of the special day. Well, that's a good idea. A good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, let me go in here. And let me see if I'm in the right. I might be in the... Oh, I don't want photo stream. I want photos. There we go. Let me jump down. Uh, Kristen uh, Benson uh, says, I recently bought uh, Samantha Youssef's uh, Movement and Form book. I understand you wrote the forward to it. Uh, I what's, did. What's the book like? Uh, it's about, it's kind of rectangular with pages. <laughs> it, no, it's very good. Uh, it's really thorough. Um, uh, I, I thought it was wonderful. Kristen on YouTube asks, I just found out that Glenn Keane won an Oscar with that Kobe Bryant guy. What's that Kobe Bryant guy, <clears throat> yep. yeah. What's the yeah. animation style he used for that short film? Uh, very sketchy. Hold on, i got to grab this. Sorry, guys. Hold on one second. And we're watching... Um, um, it's beautiful. It's it's all hand-drawn. And... Well, um, yes. Uh... It's all on paper. Yeah, it's all on paper, and I think he did a lot of charcoal. Right? Yeah, it's done um, with charcoal, and yeah. and you know, like a, a a soft graphite look. We're still live. Oh, yeah, that did uh, you actually minimize the uh, OBS? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I may have. Um, let me click on OBS. Yes, please. All right, OBS. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's fine. Like I, I lost control. <laughs> so I'm going through my know, I'm going through my Africa photos right yeah, now. I want to pull up some zebra shots. I got some really good zebra shots from the from the early part of the uh, thing here. Uh, can you I, are you actually able to go to my this Desktop? screen? Yeah. yeah. So, so they're, they're not just looking at a blank screen. That's they true. can see me scrolling. That is true. So let me uh, blow some of these photos up for you. You guys can see. These are all thousands of my photo, and I got some zebras, right? You know, Nick and Nick and I went on this trip. We were photographing and videotaping right next to each other, and uh, I want to find some. I've got some good zebra sh uh, photos from the beginning. Look at those lion shots. Look at her. Wasn't she a beauty? Look at that one right there. Oh yeah. Yeah, she was nice. But uh, yeah, let's do zebra. And uh, so I'm just going to jump to a zebra. <laughs> if I can find some good ones. Those are not bad. I know we've got some better ones. <coughs> Look at the cheetahs. Oh, good cheetahs. The first day we got some good zebra stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm kind of working my way towards that. I should just go there. By the way, uh, we have a quick question based off of the uh, Sarasota trip uh, from Detlef uh, Tabaks. Uh, hi guys, I'm coming over from Belgium to Sarasota in March. Looking forward to meet uh, to meet all of you. Uh, and I'm vegan. Is there any chance there are any alternatives for me for lunch, or should I grab some somewhere else? Uh, no, we're absolutely going to have <coughs> vegan and vegetarian options for you, so don't worry about it. In fact, as we get closer to the event, we've got a survey that's going out to everybody. We're going to be requesting all that type of information, so... 
hopefully you can hear me. I'm not sure if I'm maybe picked up on the mic. I think I am. Um, but yeah, don't worry about it. We'll take that into consideration and uh, you'll be yeah. good to go. We're, com uh, we're actually doing a completely vegan diet except for the steak, ham, chicken, and, and uh, 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 so, so not uh, entirely vegan. <laughs> <It's a Yeah>. <laughs> I'll just go with this one. Just do something kind of dramatic with this guy. Let's see. I think that's... I. Yeah, I'm, rather than sitting here for the next 20 minutes trying to find some good Ziva reference. 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 Um, I'm going to go... Abdul asks, in your an online course, are you teaching animation principles or animation drawing? Both. I teach both in my online course. Animation principles and drawing. I do a lot of animation drawing in my character design course as well. There's some interesting yeah, there, poses in here. here. And then, what do you think is better, uh, Aaron, the iPad or the Wacom Mobile for animating and drawing outside? Um, I, I, you know, that's hard to say. I, I, the Wacom Mobile, you can hook up uh, TV Paint, which is my preferred animation software, but in uh, the iPad, which is a cheaper um, alternative, you can animate in uh, um, Procre Procreate. Uh, now, it's not as robust as a program as TV Paint, but you can animate in both. So, it, it really depends on your pocketbook, I think, and what you're more comfortable with. I mean, really, it's a question of software. If it, the the yeah. Wacom is primarily like an extra monitor, right? This, so it, it's well, the, no, the not the the one the the Wacom the they're talking about is the mobile. That's the one that yeah, it's, it's got a PC built into it. But yeah. it's, you can yeah. still plug it into a Mac. So to me, it's yeah. Oh, that's true. To me, it's an extra. To me, it's an extra monitor essentially. But you so. can take it on. You take it out by itself if you if you want to go on the field somewhere. Right. Yeah, but I, I mean, if and I'm not even sure if they meant the mobile studio because they there's also like the ones like the sixteen the portable Cintiqs and all those as well, and those like don't the have any software. sixteen and the and the newly released right. thirteen. <clears throat> yeah, those don't have any software in them at all, so those they're are essentially good. portable monitors, you know. Right. So if you prefer a Mac or a PC, that's great because you can plug right in and use whatever software you're used to. If you're more used to the Apple App Store ecosystem and you like those apps, then the iPad's great as well. I mean, they're both comparable. It comes down to the software you like, you know. So what I'm doing here <laughs> is, uh, you can see I've got my sketch brush uh, out that I like to use all the time. And what I love about Procreate is um, there is no lag whatsoever on my brushes. When uh, sometimes if I blow my brushes up too big um, uh, on my computer, there'll be a lag. But on here, it doesn't matter how big I make these brushes. Oh, switch to the drawing, Justin. Oh, sorry. Pay attention, son. I'm not got, used to the iPad. You got one job. I'm not used to the iPad. <laughs> What color so, is a zebra? What color are its stripes? A zebra technically, I think, has white stripes, if I if I remember right, because if you look down the back, the seam is black, and so the the white stripes never connect. The black stripes do. So um, I think it's white stripes. I think it's a black animal with white stripes. And I'm going to caricature it a little bit. I'm going to push it, its robustness. And, and you can see how loose I, you know, even in this, uh, in this software, I can, I can keep it loose. That's one of the things I love about Procreate is the ability to, to draw like I would in my sketchbook. Someone wants to know, when are you coming to India? You know what? We've been talking about it for a while. You know, I was in India in 2011 so it's been a long time and I'd love to come back again and um, so Nick and I should and we've got a great following and some wonderful uh, friends in India that we want to catch up with um, specifically our friends Lilo Ra Rosh Lilo Rosh 
who uh, created created the Arties that you guys have seen me my art bag that I carry around with me everywhere. Um, check out Lilo Rosh. Do we have a slide for them? I don't know nope. if we do. Sorry. Oh, but um, check out Lilo Rosh because they um they have some of the best art bags, and I use mine everywhere I go. I take it everywhere, and um, they're just wonderful. And uh, and you can you can customize it. You can do anything you want. I'm posting a link. Oh, good. Nick's gonna post a link. And uh, sounds like you said like. <laughs> like I said, they're wonderful. I don't know if you. I don't know if you answered, but if not, um, not able uh, to go in the field. But where are good animal photo references? Well, Dustin Blaze has a few. Um, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't know where you would go for animal references, uh, depending on what you want. Um, I, you know, I don't recommend going to Google and just plagiarizing people's work. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you can buy stuff, but it's expensive. Um, and you can look at stuff online as long as you don't straight up plagiarize it. You know, that's that's an option. Twitch question. Uh, real quick, actually, before I get to the Twitch question, uh, we did recently release an animal yes. African cats pack on our website. And that, um, that's the next thing I was just going to say. So if, you, if, if you're interested in big cats from Africa or cats from Africa, um, we just released one on our website. Uh, do you have a paper-like screen protector for your iPad? I It should feel more like paper with it as far as I've heard. Yes, and no, I don't. And I, I'm interested in getting it because one of the things about it... Um, the uh, the surface is different than my um, my uh, Cintiq. It is a little bit smooth for my tastes. In fact, you usually use with your Cintiq. You usually use the felt tip nibs. I do. Which gives so the drawing experience on here is just a little bit different. Um, although it's not so different that I have any problem with it. One of the things I do find I have to do with the with the iPad is this. I have to set it up. Uh, I find it, I've gotten so used to working digitally, almost like I, like I'm sitting at an easel with my my Cintiq being set up in front of me, that having this little iPad sitting on my lap, my back starts to hurt and I feel all kind of scrunched up. And so I I find that um, you know sitting this way at a desk, um, or you know if I'm sitting on a in a car or whatever, having it set up like this is much better. Uh, visual development student here. Uh, do you have any tips for getting your foot in the door of a big studio like Disney or DreamWorks? The biggest thing, obviously, is going to be portfolio. And uh, depends on what you want to do in visual development. If you're wanting to do character design, location design, prop design, Whatever that is, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, you've got to specialize in that and gear your portfolio towards that. And I also, you know, I know there's differing opinions out there, but I, I recommend that you have uh, varying styles uh, so that, you know, a lot of people that go into uh, uh, visual development think that it's a it's an easy ticket because they can just go in and, and just pretty much draw on their style and, and contribute in that way. And that's really not the case. You have to be able to vary your style because every movie looks different. And if you're doing visual development for a certain movie that has a certain style to it, you got to be able to draw on that style. So being able to vary up your style is your best bet. A uh, YouTube question. In the Big Cat reference pack, <clears throat> the lion actually had some wounds on its face and forearm. Do you know what happened? Yes. They, um, the, the male lions are constant, and the females for that matter as far as hunting, they're constantly putting themselves in harm's way. And as far as the males go, they're constantly fighting with other males over um, dominance of a pride um, and, you know, having their harem and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's that's where they get their wounds there. Um, the one that you saw in that pack, that was from my trip uh, from 2011. And he had just fought this male. And when I was photographing the one that has the wounds on his face, the one that he fought was on the other side of the river behind us. And I could hear him roaring. And he was really mad that this guy had had uh, got the females, basically. And uh, that was a big puncture mark in the side of his head from uh, from a bite mark. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was it was pretty brutal. And you'll see, you know, there's there's one where it's still bloody and, and r bright red. There's another one where I, I photographed him the next day and it's kind of scabbed over and and it's a little darker and, and you know a little bit more healed. So here you can see I've just sketched in very quickly this this zebra without the stripes. I'm going to do the stripes later. Someone just uh, Eli on YouTube said I actually have one of those covers for the tablet for the iPad. It does wear out the pencil tip pretty quick, so you'll need replacements. Oh, that's that's good information. <clears throat> I never knew that. Uh, are there any nature reserves that you recommend in the in the Orlando area? Yes, there's a lot. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. So. In the Orlando area, if you first of all, you can go to the Audubon Society's uh, Birds of Prey Center in Maitland, uh, and that's just a small, you know, Birds of Prey Center. Um, but as far as parks go, there's all kinds of uh, Wakaiwa Springs, and and uh, uh, you can go down around Kissimmee. Uh, there's some beautiful areas around uh, Lake Toho. Uh, if you've got a, a if you've got a day to kill, you can go down to uh, Kissimmee. Uh, uh, Simi Prairies National Park, is it National Park or State Park or National Reserve? I can't remember. But there's a lot of places around Orlando. If you just if, if you keyword that and look it up, you'll find a lot of places. Let me go go to this real quick before we do any more questions. I want to show you that I can. Uh, one of the things you can do is I'm going to go up to the canvas and um, uh, actually I want to go to here. There we go. Um, and there's adjustments that you can make. And so I want to go to my opacity. And look, just by running my 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 uh, cursor, my my pencil across it. Oh, by the way, I'm using an uh, uh, an Apple Wait pencil too. Uh, I'm using an Apple pencil too, and uh, and that's a perfect tool for uh, iPad. And so what I'm doing is I'm you know just by running it across, I can play with the opacity of the uh, of the screen. And so this is my rough sketch. So I'm going to drop that opacity down a little bit. I'm down to about thirty percent. And now I go over to my layers and press plus, and now I've got a new layer, and I can refine this drawing. All right, go ahead, you guys. Sorry. Uh, Ty asks, 3D animation student here. Should I take an internship while studying, or should I focus on studying full time and intern after graduating? I'm currently studying online, but it seems like many studios are requiring a lot of actual work experience. Well, I mean, it depends on. I think it depends on the studio you're gonna you're gonna intern with. I think it depends on your workload. Um, anytime you can get real world experience, you're gonna learn a lot. So if you have an opportunity to get an internship, I would recommend taking it. Yes. Um, there we go. Do you have any tips on streaming when doing art? I have yet to do a stream uh, about art because I'm too shy. Well, stop being shy. <laughs> Get out of your shell. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Yeah, I mean, I think you just answered your own question. I mean, you just said, I, you know, I, I'm too shy. Well, you got to stop being shy. Get out of your shell. I don't know what you're shy about. If, if you're worried about your work, then then stop it. <laughs> there you go. There's your advice. Stop it. Hi, Aaron. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I just finished your oil painting course. I loved it. Um, oh, good. What do you add at the end to make the uh, painting shiny? I only used uh, mineral spirits to mix my paints. Um, at the end, let it dry for a couple of weeks, and then you can use a retouch varnish. <coughs> and what that does is it adds a little bit of uh, it adds protection. And I would recommend the retouch. Don't get the spray retouch varnish. Get it where you brush it on, and you can control it a lot better that way. And it's meant to, uh, it protects the, the painting. Give, and, um, and I would get a semi-gloss, and what that does is it, it gives it, um, it makes the colors uh, look richer. They feel richer and uh, a little deeper, and it gives it a little bit more range and color and value. and It looks really good. I, lo I love the look of it. Uh, does Disney offer jobs off-site, like working from home, like freelancing? Um, that, it, it, I think it, it's project to project. You'd have to, uh, I, I would say on a whole, on a, as a rule, no. But I do know people that have worked from home. But that's not, that's not the norm. 
well, I just got here. Who's, uh, who's the other guy's vo voice? Or did Dustin's voice get deep? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's me, and for the very first time ever, we have Nick Birch in the studio, my business partner. Well, he is... There he is. We are yeah. getting ready to film uh, a brand new Procreate course, which is why I'm working in Procreate today. And, uh, and so, he is here for that. And uh, he just got here this morning, and so we thought, you know what, why don't we do a, uh, a, a live stream in Procreate. We get so, well, that's probably one of our number one requests, is to do a course in Procreate. And, uh, and so that's what we did, or what, that's what we're doing. We listen to you. We listen to you every time. And so now we are getting ready to do that. We're going to be working through the weekend, and hopefully by the end of the weekend, we will be good to go. Did we uh, lose our... No, you're good. No. Oh, I just switched charge with you. Oh, gotcha. How is a zebra's face shape uh, different from... A uh, horses face shape well different horses have different shapes as well even within the horse world so you know it, it just depends on what you're talking about you know a, a Morgan horse is much different than a thoroughbred horse or a Clydesdale or a Mustang or a Mustang so even within the horses their the shapes vary um, so you know a zebra is just another shape you know being part of the horse the equine family uh, it's just another shape. Um, I don't know, like I said, because it's, it's you know, even within the horse range, uh, they're a little different. Um, there's no nothing specific. I mean, all horses have the wedge shape to their, you know, to their, in the, the, the chin, the soft chin, the big uh, jaw muscle that comes around here, the eye right here, and then the ears here. That's that's universal to horses. Um, beyond that, there are there's variations, obviously, which we were just talking about. Do you need a high-end graphics tablet to start with digital art, or can you start with anything? Well, let's go to the our, our, uh, go to the set cam again, Dustin. And so this is what I'm working on today. You can see the scale of it. This is a uh, an Apple iPad. This is an iPad Pro, right? Mm -hmm. So this is their largest model. Um, this is their largest model that I'm using. Um, personally, because I do so much art, I like if I'm if I'm buying an art utensil, I like to buy the best version that's out there. And so that's what I did here. You don't have to buy this version. Uh, you can get into a, an iPad for 400 bucks, I guess, on the low end, and um, and you can uh, get the Apple Pencil. Which is about a hundred bucks, I believe. The Apple Pencil Two, and uh, uh, which is cool. The new iPads and the Pencil. One of the cool things, keep it on the down on the uh -huh. down shooter. You can see there's a if, when I I let this go, there's a magnet right there. So the Pencil sticks there, and that when it's on there, it's recharging. It's very very cool. So I don't ever need to worry about recharging my pencil to get it to work. That was a big design improvement over the, the first. Version. Yeah, it was. It's huge. And on the iPad, uh, do you find you have to press really hard to get the drawing down? I'm used to drawing lightly on paper and in the Cintiq, but using Procreate, the line hardly shows. Well, you can adjust that. So you can go into. Let me show you. So on my, my let's say we. I'm going to go into some of the 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 regular sketching stuff that comes with the program. Uh, if I go to, let's say, Calligraphy, which is one of my favorite ones, and the Chalk Brush, I like that brush. Now if I click on that again, now it gives me all my parameters that I can play with. So you can pl play with the pressure sensitivity on here. So you can see, you know, I'm barely touching it and it's really giving us a, a, a really good line. If I go way up on it, it's really strong. So, or I can pull way back on it. <coughs> Okay, so there's a lot of different <coughs> parameters that you can play with in order to get some of those things to work a little bit better for you. Okay, so once again, if you just go, if you click on the brush that you want and then click on it again, you'll be able to play with all of your parameters. That's just the taper parameter. If we go into uh, uh, shape, you can change the shape, you can change the grain, you can change the rendering, 
the wet mix, color dynamics, dynamics, all kinds of different things you can you can play with. In the Apple Pencil, um, you can play with the pressure. And so if you're if you're having uh, some issues if, if you're using a pencil uh, in Procreate and you're having issues with that opacity, it might be in the Apple Pencil settings as well. So you can play with that. So go into that and check it out, and that might be it might take care of some of your issues. Um. Bella asks if you would still recommend the Wacom uh, 16, the one that we carry with us. I carry it with me everywhere we go. When we go on, uh, uh, when we do our trips, and uh, I absolutely would recommend it, yes. Although I've heard the 13-inch the uh, that recently came out is just as good, right? Well, I'm, I've yet to try it. Here, I've got this. I just got this in the mail, so look for this. Uh, we're going to be doing some streaming if you go to the set cam again. I just got this in the mail. This is the new Wacom One Creative Pen display, display, and it's about the size of this iPad right here. And uh, and it works like a Cintiq. You hook it up to your computer, and you can go. I, I think it. Um, I think it. I think it's three ninety nine or four ninety nine. Don't hold me to it. I got to look it up again. Uh, but it's a very cool pen display. I'm actually going to unbox it. I haven't unboxed it yet. Um, I'm going to be unboxing it, and we're going to do a demo on it in the next couple of weeks. And uh, we'll also be doing a giveaway. And so uh, look for that in the next few weeks. And what is that called again? That is the Wacom One Creative Pen Display. Creative Pen Tablet. Yep, Pen Display. And three ninety nine. Do you think three ninety nine? There you go. What do you? How do you think the colors look on the iPad? I think the colors look great. One of the things I have noticed. Um, uh, when I and it might be a setting on mine, so I don't know that it's on on the iPad side. Uh, when I when I export to share with social media or whatever, um, I find that the range, the value range that I've created in the image, is uh, gets pushed together a little bit um, on the output file, so it doesn't have quite the range. And uh, but it, like I said, it might be a setting on my end. Now, are you using a picture of an iPad in OBS to composite your hand out of the way, or are you actually using a uh, software to capture yeah, the? Uh, oh yeah, but my right now my screen, the screen on my iPad is being mirrored on my regular computer, uh, so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So if you go to the down shooter. Um, there now you can see me drawing. Yeah, that's that's how I'm doing. But if you go just to all that's all you're seeing on the on the full screen is just the screen. So my hand isn't in there. That's why um, it's not being composited out. It's just not there. And what's the software that you guys are using for this? This is called because Procreate. Nick, Nick, yeah, because Nick. Oh, you're talking about yeah, the OBS. Yeah, because yeah, Nick set this uh, set this up. So what is this exactly? What's it's it called? called Reflector. Reflector turns your Mac into an AirPlay receiver. Is it connected uh, wirelessly? Mm-hmm. Oh. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that. I don't want to have another zebra's butt in the picture. Zebra's butt. Butt. I'm just going to do it like that. <laughs> Alright, so now I've got my drawing done. Now I can come over... I'm going to create a new layer, and but I want it to be, if I hold it and then go underneath, I can move my layers around. And so I'm going to start with the white, the light color. I'm going to start with that white. And uh, so if I click on my, whoops, click on my color that I want, I'm going to keep it in the warm zone, in the warm zone. Move it up in here, right about there. And I'm going to increase the size of my brush. And so I'm pressing down so it's completely opaque, but I can go light with it too. See how light, you know, if I touch it lightly, or I can touch it hard, and it goes opaque. And so all I'm doing right now is I'm just going to color in the whole thing. I want to get my local color down. And yes, I know the... Uh, the muzzle is going to be dark, so I'll come back and I'll change that. 
I have a 10.2 inch iPad with, uh, which works great with Procreate, but the glass screen is a bit slippery compared to the iPad Pro. Uh, do you suggest getting one of those paper-like screen protectors? Yeah, actually, we, someone just mentioned that they have one, and it works great, except that it tends to wear out the pencil nib, the pencil tip, so be prepared for that. But I, do, I would recommend, if it feels uncomfortable, if it's too slick for you, then yeah, get, a, get something different. I find it kind of slick as well. I, I'm, I've adapted to it, though. It doesn't bother me so much. What really bothers me more than that is just kind of trying to hold it on my lap and draw at the same time. Um, so being able to set it up the way that I have it set up now on a desk is much better for me. But once again, if you guys um, are just coming in now, uh, Nick Birch is here, my business partner. Three quarters of the entire staff of Creature Art Teacher are here today. The other one missing is Mr. Steve Coleman. And uh, but, uh, we are creating, the reason we're working in Procreate today is uh, Nick and I are, be, are shooting uh, a Procreate course this weekend. And so look for that in the next few weeks, a brand new course on working in Procreate. We've had so many requests for that, and so um, we always try to listen to what you guys want, and so that's what we're trying to do here, is give you, uh, give you some options. How old are you, Aaron? I am 51, and, th and 17 days, in 17 days I will be 52. 52. 52. Someone asks, have you ever met Kim Jong-ji? I have met Kim Jong-ji, yes. Several times. Right? Several times. And I still get, I, I get starstruck when I get around Kim Jong-ji. I remember one time we were, we were walking around CTN and we, and he was walking by us, he was like, and dad was like, oh my god, he, that's him, he's right there, oh my god. <laughs> Kristen asks, I'm 11 and I really want to go to RISD, Rhode Island. Yeah. Uh, the portfolios are so good to get in there, though. How can I catch up with those applicants? I feel like my art is stuck, <laughs> even though I draw all the time. Okay, what's her name? Kristen. She watches hey, all of our streams. Hey, Kristen, you're 11, okay? And so you just have to keep drawing. There's, You're at an age where your brain is still getting wired, and one of the benefits that you have as an 11-year-old is that you learn a lot faster than the old guys like me. And so just get in there and draw and draw and draw and and just keep drawing. And by the time you're ready to go to RISD, well, you still got seven more years to go. There's a lot you're gonna learn in seven years. I've learned, you know, even my me, I've been, I've been doing this for the last, oh gosh, 40 years. I Even in the last seven years with the amount of work that I've been doing, my art has changed and I've learned. So, you've got to realize that you, you've got to be patient. You've got to be patient. You've got to understand that, you know, art doesn't come right away. It's something that takes time, and it's going to be a lifetime of learning for you. Okay? You're going to be learning for a lifetime. And so, you need to understand that, you know, you will catch up. You just have to be patient. And just do it. Enjoy don't be hung up on having to be good enough at age 11. That's that's horrible. That's a horrible thing to worry about. Just be just be happy and draw because you want to draw, and uh, and you'll be much you'll be much happier. Stephen All right. Coleman on Facebook says, "Whoop whoop! They said my name. They said my name. <laughs> <laughs> say my name. Say my name." Sam asks, hey Aaron, I don't know if you remember me from the last stream, but I was wondering if you happen to have any tips on making animation more fluid. Yes, make it fluid. Simple <laughs> enough. No, there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that, that go into making your animation more fluid. One is uh, making sure you use slow ins and slow outs and making sure you follow your arcs. Those are the two main things to make your animation more fluid. As things slow in and slow out, good overlap and following arcs. Those are, those are a couple of the things right there. One of the things that I've always 
remember that you mentioned that you do in your animation that you think about is arcs within arcs, like not just... Yeah, there are arcs within arcs. That gets a little hard to, to explain without showing it. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of movement within movement. Um, but from for but that that adds to fluidity. That's it what does. That's yeah, different. exactly. And for basic, but to, looking for just basic fluidity, if you can just pay attention to your slow ins, slow outs, uh, overlap, overlapping action, and uh, 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 an arcs. Right. I just I didn't mention arcs. And arcs, then you're you're ninety five percent there. And uh, Cameron asks, Aaron, I was wondering how you come up with ideas for short stories. You know, a lot of times it's it's a, it's an emotion that I try to think about. You know, with Snow Bear, it was loneliness. Uh, but then I set other parameters on myself. You know, I knew I wanted to do something that was limited in its scope as far as the number of characters and the complexity of the backgrounds. Now, I didn't want it to be limited in its <coughs> vastness, so... We chose the Arctic, and that's big and huge, and uh, but the backgrounds don't need to be super complicated. And I really wanted it uh, to be a stage for our characters to act on. And so I think about the different parameters of what it is that I want to work within, and then I try to come up with something that works within those parameters. Uh, what's the name of the spiral shape used for composition on, the, on a drawing, the one sometimes used with the thirds chart? That's the golden triangle, or the golden, the golden the triangle. triangle. That's the golden ratio, or, the, or um, um, uh, golden, uh, is it the golden rectangle, golden square? Golden ratio. Golden ratio, that's what it is, thank you. <clears throat> and so now that I've got this in, I'm not going to worry about the, the stripes right now. I want to go in and start laying in um, uh, some of the the lights and darks now. I've got a little bit of variances in the local color local color being the white And I'm just gonna add I'm gonna one of the things you can do There's a little square off to the right right here. I'm gonna hold that square down in between my my brush size and my opacity There's a button I can push and then when I, I can come down and this is how I grab Color so here I'm grabbing the color and I just want to vary it up a little bit and give it a little bit of darkness knock the size of that brush up a little bit and I just want to go through and vary up some variations get some variations in some of the the white that is on the the, uh, the zebra get some browns in there some dirt and it, you'll notice too that th this isn't white this is this is it's a very light gray I'm not hitting white yet because I want to give myself room to get brighter. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. Uh, what's your opinion on Eric Goldberg? Uh, Eric Goldberg is amazing. And uh, he's an incredibly... Uh, I don't want to say talented because it's that's an insult in my mind. He's more than talented. He's an incredibly accomplished, uh, uh, just beautiful animator. You know, creating the genie was was a highlight, I think, in his career. For he those of you that don't know, yeah, he created the genie. Go he ahead. He also co-directed Pocahontas. And y yes, and he co-directed Pocahontas. So I had the pleasure of, of working with him as both an animator, and and he was also my director when I worked on Pocahontas. Vicky asks, "Hi, Aaron. I'm from England. Hi. <clears throat> Would you say that there's a, any sort of Florida accent?" Uh, there is. I mean, a lot of a lot of, of original from the backwoods of Florida. Uh, you know, call them crackers. The southern the southern guys, Florida crackers, are what they call them. They um they've got a uh, a southern accent. It's a it's it's kind of strong. Um, and it's kind of a mix of a lot of the other southern accents that we have here in the states. Yeah, Florida is such an interesting melting pot of a state that it's not like. A strong, you know, there's not like a strong Florida accent that I think people go, that person's from Florida. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like the way you would somebody from from New uh, York or yeah, or with, with, uh, North Dakota or all Dakota. That stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so one of the things, just real quick, I'm uh, I've created a new layer on top, and now I can change the blend mode. If I go right here and click on this little letter, it opens up a whole. Uh, menu for me to change my blend mode 
and so right now it's set to normal but I can drag it down and set it to multiply which is the same thing that I do in Photoshop and then I can click back and now I've got a layer that's set to multiply and I can grab a color that's cool because I want to do my shadows I'm gonna go a little bit cool now and maybe not too dark and not too blue there we go and now I can I can start to lay in some of the shadows I can go even lighter because it feels a little too dark Would you ever draw uh, recently extinct animals like the quagga, the Tasmanian devil, uh, stellar sea cow, moa, or Tasmanian or devil is still alive. There's not a the Tasmanian devil is not oh, extinct. Tasmanian tiger. Tasmanian tiger. There you go. Did I say a uh, uh, devil? You, yeah, you my, said devil. My mistake. Uh, or the dodo. Yeah, sure. I think that'd be fun to do. You should do all of them hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Like like they're in some secret spot that they. You know, They'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never find us here. Hey, Dustin, any impersonations today? Hi, how are you? <laughs> oh no, what was the one we we came up with, uh, Vedanta, that we knew that you had to you have to oh you got to learn William Shatner. That's what it was. Oh, there's someone on the wing. <laughs> there's some one on the wing. So we were we were listening to a morning show on the way home from the airport yesterday morning at four, three or five o'clock in the morning, whatever it was, and someone went on the show was doing a perfect William Shatner. I was like, oh, Dustin's got to learn that. <laughs> it was really funny. What well, I would say about Shatner, it's all about that specific timing. It is. Singh from but, India asks, I want to learn traditional art. Do you have any courses for that? I do. It depends on what you're looking for in traditional art. I've got charcoal drawing. Uh, if you go to my website and just look, you, you'll find it. So um, it's creatureartteacher.com. And uh, I've got stuff on charcoal drawing. We've got uh, watercolor painting. We've got oil painting. Um, and then, you know, my, my anatomy courses and my, um, my character design courses and things like that, you don't necessarily have to be working in digitally. You can do them traditionally. Uh, now, if you're looking for like an Art 101 course, like Introduction to Drawing, we don't have that yet. Although Ronnie Williford will have something around the 1st of April. Uh, someone wants to know what happened with Art Story. Art Story, we, um, we we were able to raise a fair amount of money, a pretty good amount of money, to get a pitch together for it, and um, uh, we were able to go in and uh, um, we pitched it to several studios. All the well, actually, all the main studios in Hollywood. Um, we pitched it to Sony, Fox, uh, DreamWorks, um, Warner Brothers. Um, and unfortunately, they either had stories that were similar on their slates already, uh, that was several of them, or they just weren't interested. They didn't want to, uh, they felt it, it was too much like an art lesson, they, they were saying, which I disagreed with. And so it, um, we really weren't able to get it to get picked up, and we needed it to get picked up. We weren't able to do it on our own. It's too big of a movie to do on our own. And, uh, and so... Um, because it didn't go anywhere, uh, we actually ended up refunding, I don't know how much, about 80-90% of the money. Um, and, uh, and then we uh, went on from there and I've actually held on to the story and, and we still hope that it's going to go somewhere and uh, we, you know, we're waiting for the, an opportunity to present itself. But um, the biggest problem we had is that it just didn't get picked up. And eventually, I had to move on and make money to put my food on my table, basically. Yeah, so we fulfilled all the rewards that we could, and then, you know, uh, you know, for the other stuff, it's the project isn't dead. We're hoping that it still gets made. It's just a matter of getting it in front of the right people. Yeah. Uh, so, is, sorry, go ahead. <clears throat> no, that's good. You're good. Um, is drawing more important for animation or acting? Like, which has more weight in animation? 
they're, they're, it's equal weight. They both have equal weight. You know, if you if good animation has to have good drawing and good uh, acting, uh, especially full. You know, if you want to do Disney esque type animation, it's got to be it's got to be both. Um, neither one is more important than the other. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to hit some highlights. So I, I've got some light shadows. So now I'm going to create a layer on top, and I'm going to set that blend mode to color uh, to overlay, right, right there. And, uh, and now I want to grab a little bit warmer color and a little brighter. Travis just called. I wonder if he like calls intentionally. When he we're does. On he knows we're on. <laughs> and so now you can see. Remember I was saying it's not white. I want to leave myself room to, to go brighter. Say, hey, does Nick do voices too? Not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> not really, no. Um, <laughs> I don't know I'm not sync. <laughs> um, we have one of our uh, participants in the Sarasota event says, I'm super excited about the workshop. You mentioned animal drawing as a possible part of the workshop. Can you share more on that? Uh, excited to see you in March. Uh, well, we're going to leave it up to the class, I think, but we do have an opportunity to go to a place called um, Big Cat Habitat. And uh, well, there's actually a couple of places because we've got the, the aquarium nearby. Um, yeah, we're still refining a few things, but we're going to yeah. send out some announcements on that, absolutely. Um, but it's really, uh, really going to be mainly plein air painting. Um, so the, the animal drawing will be basically a supplemental. Uh, so don't, don't go there wanting to be, to do animal drawing. It's really about plein air painting and we might do some animal drawing as a supplement. Uh, we might down the road do some animal drawing, uh, you know, specifically, um, you know, further down the road. Uh, what does multiply do to the color? Well, multiply does exactly what it's called. It's multiplying all the layers underneath it with the layer that's on top. So anything I put on top, it's making it transparent, but it's multiplying. It's darkening. It's bringing all the layers together and adding them, you know, adding them up to get the image that you get. Which is why I use it to get shadows, because it's um, it's it's adding everything together. So therefore, going darker. Have you ever seen animals that um, that used to be around on this planet, but eventually went extinct many years later? Have I ever seen them? Yeah. Uh, no, because they're well, extinct. I, mean, there's been I think you're just asking if <laughs> like, any animals that have gone that, extinct in your lifetime. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there, there's a lot of, there's animals that have gone extinct today that we don't hear about. So yes. Any that you can think of off the top of your head that you remember seeing as a kid or don't see anymore? Yeah. Um, no. There, there's a few animals here in Florida that that have gone that, you know, you, d you don't see them very often. We didn't see them very often to begin with. I feel like when I was younger I used to see a lot more fireflies. Um, yeah. That, that probably just has to do with spraying and light pollution because I, I have been places where there's still tons of them but yeah, sure agree. Doesn't, it feels like they were everywhere when we were kids it does doesn't it so here you can see that I've created a zebra without stripes and so now all I need to do I'm, I've concentrated on getting um, you know the and it's still not quite perfectly white yet but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer uh, where do I want to do it? I'm going to do it underneath. I'm going to create a new layer, but it's going to be under the shadow layer and under the highlight layer. And this is going to be my stripe layer. Oh, and by the way, if you want to label them, uh, you can just click on it like this re and hit rename. Whoops, rename, and I can type stripes. Twitch question What's your opinion oh, of gouache? <laughs> I love gouache. Gouache is opaque watercolor, gouache is very forgiving. One of the things I love about gouache is it's your ability to uh, uh, kind of change it and repaint over it, whereas watercolor, you have to go from dark to light. But in gouache, you don't necessarily have to do that. 
You can go. You, I I tend to go dark to. I, I'm sorry. In watercolor, you have to go light to dark, and uh, in gouache, I go dark to light usually. Now I haven't noticed Aaron so much with you on this, and this, I'm just curious. You tend to just be drawing at the dimensions of the thing. Have you found yourself pinching and zooming very much? You know, I don't. Gym? Whoops. I I don't. I'm spitting all over it too. <laughs> I don't really I sometimes do you know I'll pull it in a little bit tighter but I find um, I don't know maybe it's the medium I'm just I just it's like I'm I feel like I'm drawing on a pad of paper anyway and you can't do that with a pad of paper so I think I'm just in my brain I'm just I forget that I can pinch and pinch and that's just know. interesting because I know I mean with Photoshop you do it all the time so I just notice you don't really do it all yeah the time. and I just... think I think it's because I don't I think I forget that I can are these uh, digital brushes that you're using right now uh, for sale on your site? They are. Yeah, this is my number one brush that I always use. Um, and uh, I really love the texture of it. And uh, and one of the other things is uh, it's, just a link. It's, just, it's just got a really nice feel to it. It's one that I created quite a while ago, a few years ago. The pastel C brush in yeah. the set that I just posted the link to. Pastel C. Do albino zebras have stripes? No, an albino zebra would not have stripes. Yeah, there's that one. There's a. Um, I'm seeing a Facebook post has gone around of um, the baby zebra that's like black with white spots not stripes yeah it's a it's a recessive gene that I got from both the parents actually I think uh, um, I think Jorge was telling us you know because it was in it was in the Maasai Mara that they found that ba that baby zebra yeah, yep. yeah that, was, that, that was actually a couple weeks before we were there yeah it's a zebra that actually it's a young zebra that actually ended up with spots rather than stripes yeah it's interesting and Have you ever or will you ever try Clip Studio Paint? Um, I can't say I never will, but I no, I haven't, and I haven't found the need to. I think we're just going to have to, for the next few weeks, do Aaron tries blank. I know. Aaron tries blank. <laughs> yeah, because everybody uses something different, and I just, you know, I don't use every piece of software that's out there. I just think we should do it. I think it'd be, that's, you know. Yeah, it's kind of like what I've been saying of, like, all the different challenges that should, like, what if it's like trying to draw with crayons or trying to yeah. draw upside down and in this case it's, yeah it's different <laughs> types of random stuff different types of software I guess Queen but, uh, Cheetah says every time I come to your streams I'm always astounded uh, I always aspire to reach your level of drawing and I've recently bought your animal drawing bundle and it's helped me so much thank you oh you're welcome that's great I like to hear that so one of the reasons I'm putting the stripes underneath my shadow layer and my uh, highlight layer is that the shadow, the stripes themselves will be affected by those layers ever so slightly. And then I can go in and adjust them even more a little bit later. Is the stripe layer underneath the multiply layer? Yes. Uh, and on top of the local color? Yes, that's what I was just saying. Yep, exactly. Cute. One of the things you have to be careful about on this pencil is when I double tap the pencil, you'll see see how um, go to the go to the down shooter. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry if I, I with all these, go if ahead. you see me double tap, it goes to eraser. And sometimes I'll double tap it by accident and I'll go to draw and I'll erase. And then I gotta <laughs> double tap and come back. So that's just one thing to be careful of when you're when you're whoops, see I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Thanks, Brittany. <laughs> you're welcome. <clears throat> Uh, will other Bluetooth pencils, like the 53 pencil, uh, work as well as the Apple Pencil and Procreate? 
Uh, you know? Generally speaking, not as well. Not as well? Yeah. Um, Apple has just really fine-tuned that pencil to work really well with their device. It just, it's, the other Bluetooth ones I've tried have not, I mean, they there's some really good ones out there, so don't, you know, if you, if you are on an iPad that doesn't support the Apple Pencil, um, you can still have a really good experience, but the, you know, as far as a stylus goes, it's the best two I've ever used are the Apple Pencil or the one that comes with any walking device, like a Cintiq. Now, my personal question, but uh, uh, does the Apple Pencil have pressure sensitivity? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yep. It's like, so it's pretty much like a Cintiq. Yep. Yeah, everything you see me doing right now, it's all, it's, it's, I, that's one of the great things about it is that it feels like I'm really using a really, a real pencil. <laughs> Adam uses voice recognition technology in what? a lift uh -oh. in Scotland. <laughs> You've never done that one before. While drawing oil painting. Steve and I are starting a live stream bingo. We're going to issue <laughs> bingo cards for whenever you guys say these things and we're going to randomize it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys yeah, start com adding little comments uh, just to not just to say those things. <laughs> uh, what's the size of the canvas you're using right now? Uh, Two thousand by three thousand pixels. I don't know what the DPI is off the top of my head. I think the most common phrase would be the "There we go." There we go. There we go. Check this out. Hey kid, hey kid, <laughs> they're focused on your hair. Someone you asked, if you trouble. don't like that double tap set setting to erase, are you able to turn it off? I'm sure you are. I just haven't. Uh, I haven't looked to do it yet. Yes, you definitely are. I've seen it in there. I just. Yeah. I'm sure it's in your it's in your pencil settings. Martin Berger says, "Hi, you could sell the uh, live stream bingo cards on your website." There you go. There you go. Hey kid, there you go. <laughs> hey, when did you meet Walt Disney? Oh my god. <laughs> Back to that one again. Is that from Nolan? No, that's from uh, Martin Berger. Walt's uh, a eh? Twitch comment. Dang it, Aaron, why you gotta have cool brushes? Now I gotta go buy them. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of them too. They're really cool. The fur brushes work really good on here. Now we are going to be slowly releasing Procreate optimized versions of the brushes. Yes, because they do take a little bit of tweaking when you get them in here. So we're going to get them already tweaked for you, and then uh, and then we'll bring them over and sell them. So uh, this takes a little bit of time. Obviously, this is the long. This is the, the drawn out part of the process of drawing a zebra. Whoops, see there? The good thing about if you erase it by accident, you can hit undo, which is a little arrow right underneath the opacity setting. And it undoes the, the erasing. Okay, so I'm gonna get up into the fine stuff now. Travis just wrote, I actually like the double tap, but when I switch to Cintiq, I find myself double clicking the Wacom. Oh. <laughs> Every time I, th I talk about the double tap, I think of a double tap like assassin. <laughs> Do zebras have meat paddles? Or do they have meat sticks? <laughs> they got meat sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Can Nick tell us some funny stories about Aaron? That would be cool. Well... Before we get to that, when do you stream? Is it randomly or is it a set schedule? This is my first time. Uh, we stream every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. They're in India, so it's 1 a.m. their time. Oh. Oof. No, it wouldn't be. That's what he just said. He said it's 1 a.m. where he's at. And it, it's not its not a 12-hour difference in India. You must be in Eastern India. 
India is a big country. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You must be in eastern India. Oh, well, it's 1 a.m. now, so that's an 11-hour difference. That's well, plus India has some funky changes. Like yeah. they, they have like a half-hour difference. And yeah. So, yeah, because India, I thought, was like an 8-hour difference, but I might be thinking of like Mumbai and Delhi and stuff so like it's that. It's a wider country. Yeah, I know. Um, but it's, yeah, we, we start at 1 p.m., Eastern time, that's Eastern United States. But all of our live streams are always automatically available on the channel right after we're done. It usually takes about 30 to 40 minutes, and they're they're up there. Sometimes yeah. an hour, depending on how long it takes to encode. So any funny stories? Uh, well, Dan, before we get to that, just wants to know... <laughs> What did you find more difficult, having Walt Disney stand over your shoulder while you were drawing, <laughs> or the animating on stone tablets? The animating on stone tablets was really tough, but <laughs> it did build up my forearm strength. I bet. Uh, does Procreate record this process? If yes, uh, can you play it at the end? Yes, and yes. Uh, have you tried Adobe Fresco? Uh, I have tried it, but not enough to form an opinion on it. Uh, it literally was about a five minute little test thing that I tried. You were set the beta of it early and we just... Yeah, I just hadn't had the ability to go and try it, to try it out. And it's out now, we just haven't had a chance to really play around with it. Um, we'll do that on a future stream. Yeah. Aaron th tries Fresco. Yeah, there's really only so many things I can do. Doggone it, I keep double tapping that thing, it's driving me nuts. I am going to turn that off. Where's the, uh, let's see if we I can figure it out. The I think it's under the settings, the gear guy or whatever it is. Yeah, let's go over to, to the gear guy. It's the wrench, right? Isn't yeah, it's the uh, wrench. That's just drawing guide. Uh, that doesn't really give... Well, hold on, let me see. There's a whole bunch of tools under there, all those things under top, I think. Yeah, there's add. No, I don't want to add anything. Canvas, no. Uh, prefs. Oh, here we go. Uh gesture controls. Would it be gesture controls? Oh, it's actually... Apple Pencil. Here we go. Oh, that's smudge. Oh, it's actually a setting in iOS. Interesting. you got to go into the settings app. Oh, in the general settings of the computer? Of the iPad. Of the iPad. Oh. Okay. So let's do that. So let's... I'm going to come out of this and go into my settings here. And Apple Pencil, there it oh, is. Go back to it, sorry. Uh, double tap. There it is, right there. How do I turn that? I just. I think it's just. Oh, there should be an off button. Yeah, well, if you look at this, come over here real quick. It just shows, it's, it's, it keeps flashing double tap. Double tap on the side of the pencil. Off. Oh, <laughs> I was looking at the pencil. <laughs> See, this is why I have Nick. <laughs> there we you go. See, you see that icon that says off? They <laughs> hate me. Nick, 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 Bert. Do the thing live. <laughs> he did the thing live. Nick, you did the thing. Have you experimented with um, Procreate's new animation feature? I have. Very little. But I'm going to be doing a little bit more of that in future streams and in the upcoming course on how to work in Procreate. Kendra Williford is watching us on Twitch today. Kendra! And she says, I got a Twitch account. I just hopped over to your stream from Dave Greco. I was watching him, and he also went to Ringley. Wow. Right on. Wow. Wow. Uh, what model iPad are you currently using? iPad Pro. iPad Pro. Any funny stories to share from earlier mm, that I've been Nothing that's coming to my head. I'll, I'll, that's why I didn't say any. I'll, I'll keep thinking <laughs> of them. Um, have you ever thought about making a calendar with different images uh, for the seasons or months? No. Um, we've just got, we've got so many... We've got a lot of different projects that we have. One of the biggest projects that we have uh, that we're just getting started on is a book. So we're getting an Art of book co coming, and, and that's going to be coming hopefully within the year. 
Can you tell us a little about your anatomy lessons? It's about um, my approach. It's my approach to the way I think about human anatomy. So it's not really, you're not going to get a proper course on like muscle names and things like that. It's more about how I think about muscle groups. And we've actually had, just to be full disclosure, we've had a couple of people that have gone on and it wasn't what they expected and where they wanted something a bit more academic. And, um, and so they were a little bit disappointed. It's the way I think about anatomy, the way I approach it. And um, it's the way that I've learned from other animation artists over the years. And, uh, and so I want to make that clear, first of all. Uh, and like I said, it's not an academic lesson on muscle names and, and things like that. It's how I think about the groups, how they move uh, in relation to one another, um, that sort of thing. But I, I do hit every part of the body. I wonder if there's a way, that, and this is something I haven't figured out on Procreate. I've actually learned a lot on Procreate, uh, and I wonder if there's a way to lock a layer, like I do in, in Photoshop to where I can't draw outside of that layer. There is. I don't remember off the top of my head. Let's see. It's got to be under Shocker Noise Liquify Clone. Balance. Or it's under the layer itself. Alpha lock, where you can only paint inside what already exists on the layer? Yes. says Nick doesn't have any funny stories to tell about Aaron because he he has to live in his closet <laughs> <laughs> so you select the layer yeah uh, you swipe right with two layers with two fingers sorry you need these two fingers. oh there it is I got it it's right there lock no that's not alpha lock though Oh. That locks the layer, like, locks it. You can't touch it or move it. Oh. Use, use two fingers. Swipe, no, on the layer. Like this? Yep. Go the other way. No. I think you, it says do you this. Do, do what I think it says do this. Hold on. Nope. Oh, what was that that showed up down at the bottom? Oh, maybe that wasn't. No, that's a bunch of other stuff. We're learning live. We are learning live, baby. We did something. You did something to the background. Let me change. You did something to the background. Layer options menu. Yeah, you locked it. You locked everything. Now I can't draw. Nick, why'd you do that? I did. Yeah. Uh, you undo? I'm trying to undo it. Hold on. Just hit Control Z. It's just undoing the paint strokes. Oh, it stopped. There we go. I, I got it. I got it, Nick. Okay. We're good. I often have difficulty determining where uh, to highlight and where to shot where the shadow should be. Uh, do you have any tips uh, watching from the Netherlands, by the way? Yeah, I mean, one of the things, you really have to think about your light source, and, and that really comes from drawing from life as often as you can. If you're trying to do something out of your head and you're not sure about, you know, where the shadows and the highlights should be, it's because probably you haven't observed it enough. Um, and so it's really thinking about really what is, where is that light source coming from? Um, and so, and once you understand where that light source is coming from, you're going to understand what's going to be hitting, being hit by direct light, what's going to be uh, having a cast shadow uh, thrown against it, 
Uh, you're gonna. It'll also tell you where bounce light, reflected light, is coming from. There's a lot of information that you can get once you understand where the light source is coming from. And once again, understanding that really comes from direct observation, drawing from life over over you know a period of time. I think we figured out. Somebody told us what to do. Click the layer thing again. Yeah. Now click on the picture of the layer. Oh, look at that alpha lock. There it is. See, I oh, didn't know that. Yeah, oh, not, I clicked on it earlier to rename it. It's minimized. Oh, we wait. What's minimized? The the this the mirror screen because remember it's not not oh, right it there. Oh, froze. Yeah, okay. froze up. So hold on one second. You minimized. You stop drawing. Nobody can see. Oh, it. where is it? Here, I'll get it here. Grab it. Nick, do the thing. It's right there. Oh, we stopped it. Airplanes, or airstreams. Oh, we'll fix it real quick. We just got a screen mirror. Maybe it automatically turns off after a certain, a certain nah, time. I think it just. Back up. Good to go. Good to go. Sorry. Let's, I, yeah, let's check to see if it. Oh wait, hold on, wait a It made a big again. One second. Aaron. Sorry, folks. Uh, mouse. Where is the mouse? It was just you're on it. You're on it. What? You're you just, on it. Just grab. There we go. All right, we good to go? Yep, we're good. I can draw. We're good. Yep, sorry about that. Sorry, folks. This is our first time doing this, so bear with us. And thank you, um, Melanie and Richard, for pointing that out. I think it just stopped for like barely. Is it doing what it's supposed to be? Would you expect it? Working. We're talking about the mirror things. That's working now, but. No, I mean the Aaron is the layer lock working the way oh, I expected. No, it yeah, I just don't. I don't. Uh, yes, I don't need it yet, but it will be. It will be. Oh, it will be. Nice. Yeah, right there, Nick. Yeah. Don't mind me. <laughs> this chair went. That was Nick falling over. Nick didn't fall. <laughs> that was your Not chair. Come on, guys. Quit making fun of me. <laughs> Come on, guys. I just came out. I came out of the closet for this. Come on. Hey, guys. I got superpowers, too. I have powers. I'm a superhero, too. For those who don't that don't know the came out of closet joke, it's because on the Proco video, they think I live in the closet right here. Oh, in right. The yeah, studio. Yeah. <laughs> Still a funny story. We should, like, one well, of these days should make, like, a... Did uh, you work on Brother Bear? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did work on Brother Bear. I did. I co-directed Brother Bear. I think it would be really funny for, like, a uh, fake, like, behind-the-scenes... To have you over here sometimes just make like a fake little desk in there, just having you sit in there. <laughs> yep, me, Nick got the bad chair. <laughs> what would we do without Nick? Um, nothing. We, no, we, I, I wouldn't be, yeah, we wouldn't be anywhere without Nick. We Don't would, you forget it. I know, I won't forget <laughs> it. Steve, on the other hand, <laughs> if there's any weight we could stand to lose. <laughs> See when you're fired. See when you're going to be hired. I'm all light with questions. We well, have a left in Scotland when you need one. Boy, that never gets old. No, it does not. <laughs> Opacity. Do you have any new new questions, Nick? Yeah, I'm just I'm just reading through. Gotcha. Letting Aaron breathe. Draw. Letting him focus. 
So just laying in these stripes, you know, once again, if you if you're coming in late, the way I approach this was not drawing the stripes and the you know everything all together. I laid in the the white part of the of the animal first, and then and then I you know worked out my the light and shadow and everything else, and then it was just a matter of going in and working out the stripes. I can think about them as separate elements. Let's put them on a different layer. And that's what I'm doing here. Olivia Newman says you should come visit Seattle. I'm going to be in Seattle in, uh, in the end of April. I'm going to visit my little brother Travis Blaze. It's his 50th birthday. Oh yeah. A couple people have suggested that rather than use layer locks, and I think you can do this in Photoshop too, so I think it's the, the equivalent idea, that they use, they make a clipping mask layer, and then you put it, you're basically yeah, putting you it can. above, and then it only, it's the same idea, but you're not, you've still got the layer underneath if you want to get without drawing on it. Yeah. Is it, is it kind of six and one half dozen of the other? It's kind of this, or is, or, or is there a... Yeah, I mean, except, except in this case, you've got the safety of a, of an actual oh, extra the, layer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the the layers, the a, the yeah. saved layers underneath. Yeah. I don't. I, I understand that. I don't. I don't worry about it. I um. Because one of the great things about doing that is I can just always repaint it back to the way I needed it very quickly, especially in this case. You know, because what I'm all I'm doing and when I lock this up is I want to make sure that I can hit darker shadows and hit some highlights. Even you know the the. The stripes themselves actually get highlights on them. And it actually helps with showing some of the roundness of the animal a little bit better. Uh, did you find anyone for the dinosaur drawing course? If not, I know of a few uh, people who are amazing and could be interested. Uh, when we get to something like that, we'll let you know. Right now, we're not. We haven't been looking for anybody for the dinosaur drawing course. It's not. It's not uh, super high on our list right now, but we will get to it. What's the one animated feature film you wish you could have worked on but didn't get the chance to? Well, there's a lot. Bambi, for one, because I was born forty or twenty years too late. Well, actually, no, more than that. Forty years too late. Um, uh, Zootopia. I loved Zootopia. I wish I could have worked on that. Uh, there's a lot. Iron Giant. It's just the wrong studio for Iron Giant. For Brother Bear, uh, did you guys have a have to plan ahead of time to create the blooper reel for it? Oh yeah, the blooper. There's there's no bloopers in animation. That's all, you know. We we make those up. So yeah, we've had to plan ahead. And we had to make those up. Those aren't. Those are fake bloopers. Let's call those floopers. Floopers. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. The an industry term. What will your next course be after the Procreate course? Birds of Prey, Gouache, Acrylics, Primates? It's going to be all of those. It's just a matter of which one's going to be first. I'm also doing, uh, because I've noticed that there's a real strong interest, I'm going to be doing a course, an anatomy course, specifically on hands. Um, really dive deep on, onto hands and, uh, and, you know, and how expressive they can be, how you can use them in animation. Uh, fat hands, short hands, baby hands, you know, uh, uh, elegant hands, just everything you can think of about hands and the way that I use them in animation and, and everything else. Um, I touch on hands in my anatomy course and, uh, and it's fairly in depth, but this one I want to go even deeper. Hi, this is Jenny from North Wales. I met you at the Chester Zoo and Tatton. Hey. Uh, please say hi to everybody for me. And You at, just did. And at last I have your oil painting course and watercolor course. All right. 
you remember she came and found us at Tatton as well. Remember? I do so remember. She brought the wonderful drinks. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, I've had uh, several snifters of that. Very good stuff. <laughs> Floopers is now trending, apparently. <laughs> Floopers. <laughs> Uh, what kind of wildlife can we have in Sarasota? As far as the uh, the trip goes, what kind of wildlife? Like what kind of wildlife will we be seeing in Sarasota during the uh, well, workshop? I think it'll be a lot of uh, bird life that we see when we do our plein air. But uh, as far as wildlife, we're we're like I said, we're we're not necessarily doing uh, an animal drawing course. This isn't this is a plein air painting course. We might go out and do some animal drawing as a side uh, excursion, uh, but this is really about plein air painting, land, landscape painting in watercolor. Is there a movie you think would have been better as animation? Oh, wow, I never thought of that. I would say Aladdin. <laughs> well, Aladdin was animated. <laughs> that's I'm talking about the, that's the joke. I was talking about the, the live, live action. action one would have been better as an animated. <laughs> Oh, yeah. right, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. I would love at least once to see what it would be like for a James Bond film to be animated. I wonder what that would be Any like. of the Incredible Journey movies should have been animated and not done in live action. Incredible Journey. Is that the... Um, it's all the ones where the animals are trying to find their way home. It's usually a dog and a cat and, oh, yeah. and a turtle and a whooping around. This is a follow-up question from one of the people that's just watching for the first time. And I know we've gotten this question a few times. So <clears throat> is there any sequence or order to your courses, or should we start with any of these? I want to start I want to start art from the basics and work forward. Well, um, I'm glad you're asking that because... Uh, one of the things we do have coming up soon, which we don't have right now, uh, is a course from Ronnie Williford, which is, you know, basically it's an approach to drawing. It's basic, you know, drawing 101. And um, that's going to be coming out in the next few months. Otherwise, I would say start with, you know, anatomy. I've got my anatomy course. Um, uh, I've got, you know, my watercolor course starts with the basics. So, you know, it depends on what you want to learn. If you're wanting to learn uh, digital painting, traditional drawing, um, any of that stuff. Uh, are you going to use one of Dustin's amazing photographs for reference <laughs> for a painting of Florida wildlife sometime? Might I suggest the otters? Yeah, they're all right. <laughs> and they're, they're crap. Yes, I, I, at some point I will be using them. This whole conversation is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> 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 I, I see what you did there. If you weren't artistically gifted, uh, what other hobby or talent would you fall back on? I'm not artistically gifted. I've just worked at it a lot more than other people because I liked it. So I want to make that clear. You can do whatever you want. You just have to work hard at it. And, uh, you know, talent comes from practice. And if you just choose to practice something every day, you'll, you'll get good at it to the point where people think that you're gifted at it. And so I'm not, I just did it a lot as a kid. I don't think I was any more talented than any other kid, or if there is such a word as talent. Uh, Twitch question. Please make an elephant course. Uh, frowny, cr crying face times three, please. Okay, well we've got the we've got an elephant PDF, uh, which is basically a packet on elephant drawing. But we have we have had several people that asked if we could do more than that, and so we will do an elephant course, for sure. And going back to the other question, uh, after I got off my high horse about talent, um, I would be a musician. I can see that. And beyond that, I'd be homeless because I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> forestry. Yeah, I would. I would be into for I. I. You'd be a ranger. Yeah, I would go in. I. One time, I'd thought about doing forestry when I was in high school. 
Have you tried the animation tools in Procreate yet? I have, and I, I like it a lot. Um, it's a very simple approach. It's very intuitive, and uh, I'm going to be doing some demonstrations on it in the future. Do you have any tips for drawing from animation, and do you think it's uh, necessary for an artist to be able to draw without reference? And greetings from Finland. No, it, it's not necessary. I mean, I've, I've, I draw with reference all the time. I'm drawing with reference right now. So it's okay to draw with a reference. Just, you know, you want to, you don't want to have to depend on your reference all of the time, first of all. And, um, and you want to be able to have the ability to change that reference and make it work for you rather than you be a slave to what the reference is, is telling you. So that's my biggest thing is, you know, so many people find themselves getting really hung up on their reference. Any? Alpha lock, look at that. Okay, cool. Any chance you'll ever attend Adobe Max? Um, I've actually taught at Adobe Max uh, several times. Um, I just, uh, it was a lot of work to get prepared for those. And I, um, the scheduling, the really scheduling was tough as well. And so I uh, backed out and so I don't really teach at those anymore. Like I said, only because it was just, it was extremely difficult to, to do a proper job in getting it prepared in the way that Adobe wants. So what I'm doing right now is I've, I've actually locked the stripe layer and I'm going in with a very dark color to darken all the areas that need to be in shadow. And I'm going almost black. How do you come up with your color choices? Um, I think in terms of hue, first, you know, well actually no, I take that back. I think in terms of warm and cool first, uh, is it a warm color, a cool color? And then from there I think about uh, hue. Is it, you know, what, what, is it red, green, blue, whatever? Um, and then I think, uh, well, actually, I take that back. The next thing after uh, warm or cool is value. Is it light? Is it lighter, darker than the you know than the image next to it? You know that sort of thing. And then I go to color. Um, value. Value to me is uh, and and temperature are the most important parts of the whole process. And. Um, and you can get away with your color being completely off, but if it's the right value and the right uh, temperature, then you're doing okay. So now I'm going to go a little brighter. And I'm going to go blue, because it's interesting how the, the black stripes tend to reflect the blue of the sky. Do you think you could draw one of the brother bears blindfolded? Draw a brother, one of the bears blindfolded? Like, could a, you draw them without looking? Yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they wanted me to draw one of the bears with a blindfold on. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Why would I draw a bear blind, with a blind that's blindfolded? <laughs> yes, I could probably do it blindfolded, <laughs> is, the, is the long answer. Why does Aladdin get so much hate? I enjoyed it. Loved the costumes. Was it Will Smith? No. Will Smith did a great did a great job. And I don't know that Aladdin gets a lot of hate. I wouldn't say that I hate it. I'm just not a fan of it. I've wa I've watched I've uh, I've watched it while babysitting um, my sister's kids, and you mean your niece and nephew. Yeah, my niece and nephew. <laughs> I just call my sister's kid. But, um, yeah, it's just some areas fell out of pace and just didn't feel right. And plus, Aladdin was one of my, the animated Aladdin was one of my favorites growing up to a point where I watched it all, all the time. And, you really did. Yeah, and so seeing the live action ver version, 
It's not bad for the current generation, but it's not for me. And the so you're saying there's a chance. Eh. Okay, so you can see what I've done here. I've, added, I've been able to add some variance in color by locking that layer, and but not affecting any of the white around it. So that's that's a pretty cool ability to be able to do that. What's Nick's favorite Disney movie? <sighs> I tend to go for Lion King. That's probably the one that immediately was always my go-to answer for sure. Um, I don't know that this is the one that people really think of, but I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's a Disney movie? Yeah. It's well, I mean, it's it's Disney a touchstone picture. Dis yeah, it's touch and uh, oh. um, Amblin. It was a Disney production, right? I did not know that. Uh, well, I know that Disney did the the short the short versions of the Roger Rabbit stuff, but I didn't know Disney that. owns the character. All oh, right. Um, it's a complicated story about whose movie that is, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, I would say of the of the. Of the animated, you know, the Disney classics, probably Lion King. Nice. So what I'm doing now is I've created a layer on top, and Except I've said it. I thought she was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the young Nala specifically. Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I've set the, I've set the overlay, I've set it to overlay so that I can uh, hit some even brighter highlights in here. I hate you guys. <laughs> Especially you, Katie. <laughs> Can you make a whole animated short on Procreate? I'm assuming you could. Um, you have to... You can't... It only holds so many frames. That's one of the limits of it. So you have to output it and then do it again. And then you'd have to cut it all together later on. But yeah, I think you could. Do you ever find yourself missing the outer edges of the painting in Procreate? I only have a regular iPad, but um, I noticed that even when I zoom out, I have an edge that didn't show up and I have to paint it in. <laughs> no, I, I, I usually keep it, uh, I don't, um, uh, what am I saying, Aaron? I, I keep it pretty z uh, zoomed out the whole time. And how do you like the Procreate uh, color wheel compared to Photoshop? Um, I like it. Uh, it's, you know, it's different, obviously, but I like it. And, uh, now you got this, uh, question from earlier, uh, but what are the differences between the skull of a zebra and a horse? Um, once again, different horses have as oh, many... Oh, the screen recording is stuck again. Oh! What's that? The screen recording is stuck again. Are you me mirroring? I may have hit something, but I don't know. No, that I, did. I think the. Oh, I just turned off here. I think what's happening is it's. I think is it, it goes to sleep. Time limit? I think it like goes to sleep after. I don't know if there's a time limit or if it's just going to uh, losing the Wi-Fi signal or whatever. But something's dropping out. Oh. No. Oh, hold on one second, Aaron. I think we're okay. Good. Shrink. It's hard to get the corner of that thing. I can do it again very well. I got it. Cool. We're good. Go. We good. So now I can go in here. And I can do some work on the eye. And so one of the things I like about this, just to be specific, is you can see how it doesn't feel digital. It feels like it's traditional art. And uh, that I like. How did you make it look like the stripes are shimmering? Well, that's the thing. I, I I put the stripes on their own layer, and then once I did that and I colored them in, I locked that layer so that I could paint over it, but not paint anywhere else except on the stripes themselves. And so one of the things that I did was I went in, um, I do know that the stripes themselves, um, when you see a zebra, they'll reflect the, the color of the sky back. And so I added some blue into the stripes, and then I added, you know, in the light areas, I brighten them. In the dark areas, I darken them. And so it gives them form, and it let, makes them feel like they're actually wrapped onto the, the character. 
or the in this case not a character but the on the on the animal and so uh, that's how you do that you know that you want to keep keep in mind that the stripes themselves they have form as well they have to wrap around whatever it is that that you're drawing somebody mentioned uh uh, Lisa on Facebook says it could be me, but maybe it's the iPad versus iPad Pro difference. But I find that I can't use as many layers as you're using at a high resolution. That's true. You um, when you go higher resolution, your number of layers will drop. I did one the other day that the resolution was so high it only allowed me to do 18 layers. Um, but at that point, you can compress layers together, and you know there's always ways around it. I'm very surprised that there hasn't been a live action of Treasure Planet or Atlantis the Lost Empire. Those movies I can definitely see as live, give it time. good live action. I was going to say, give them time. They'll get to it eventually. Yeah. And it's probably the most original question ever. What are your thoughts on Klaus? <laughs> the Netflix 2D animated film, I'm sure you've heard of it. Yes, I love Also, Klaus. what do you think about the future animation with Klaus almost paving the way for a new style of animation other than CGI to be accepted? Well, I don't think it's paving the way for new styles of animation because you know, hand-drawn animation was the standard just 20 years ago. But I do think it's paving the way for us to go back to that and have more than just CG animation be the be the standard out there so I, I think Klaus on its own has single-handedly kind of brought 2d back into the mainstream do yeah. you ever feel that you have too much inspiration but not enough time to do everything yes that that's specific on like things like snow bear which is our our animated project that we've been trying to get finished for the last three years and we find ourselves struggling to get to get to it because we have so many obligations with other projects courses things like that and so it's tough hi guys hi any tips on getting more of a social media following? I have an Instagram wildlife uh, art channel, but only slowly growing. Maybe Nick has some business tips? It's consistency, I think. You can finish the, the answer, Nick. But no, I would agree. I mean, it's... Listen, it's... There's no magic formula for what's going to take off and what isn't and who's going to make it big and who isn't and you know you just got to keep putting content out there and hope that uh, something catches attention enough that it you know it usually jumps in plateaus like you know when you're first starting off one image gets like 10 likes or 5 likes you know and then all of a sudden you get one that gets 100 likes and you're really excited it's like oh that was really cool so that's like a new plateau for you and then Maybe it's a few months later. Maybe you get 500 likes. It's just it, it, things build slowly. Sometimes it takes days, months, years, weeks, you know, and it's going to be different for everybody. There's no magic bullets um, on social media. Uh, you know, it helps if you've directed a 2D animated feature film. Yeah, um, I mean, that, and having the Disney pedigree, that really did help me a lot. You know, but... Um, beyond that consistency is the most important thing and just you know don't do it for the following I mean the, the idea of making a lot of money off of social media directly um, I don't know that that's for most people a worthwhile effort but if you're using it to as promotion for your photography business or something like that, then it is worth it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's a matter of, you know, it's a matter of having realistic, uh, realistic uh, expectations. Yeah. 
But I would definitely say I would definitely agree that the the key the key thing is from the very very beginning consistency. Because it's like a s it's like trying to build a snowman. You start with a small snowball. Do you want to build a and you're, snowman? And you roll it and you roll it and the more and the more you roll that snowball, the bigger it be the bigger it becomes and so you can start using that foundation, you know. So or something like that. Twitch comment. This is the same person I was talking about the brushes. I just went on a spending spree on your website. My <laughs> wallet hurts, but I have no regrets. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm actually using one of my other texture brushes. I'm not I, familiar with Procreate. What do those two sliders on the right hand side do? This, this slider controls the size of the brush right here. And this slider controls the opacity. Did you see Loving Vincent? You know, I never did, and that, that drives me nuts. I should have seen it. Loving Vincent, which one was that? It's one? the one that was all done in oil paintings. Vincent oh, Van Gogh. Yeah. yeah. I've seen the behind the scenes in Starry, uh, Starry Night. That is. <laughs> yeah, because all those are, are oil paintings. Yep. That That's, they are. So you can see, you know, this is some of my textured brushes here. You can bring in different brushes from outside and get some great effects. I'm really having a ball with this. One of the things I might do, I'm going to try something. I'm going to um, try something right here. Someone asked if you could show like a ball bounce or an animation at the end. Do you? And I was thinking that's too much to do in this stream, but do you have one that you've already done? I don't have one on here. Okay, I no. wasn't sure. No, but um, I will do it on the next stream. You got a little soda there, Dustin? Mm -hmm. I think everybody heard that. I, I, I don't think they did. <laughs> I think they just heard fake news. <laughs> There's got to be a blur, right? A Gaussian blur. So I'm going to try something. I'm going to try doing my typical kind of shadow layer across here. Shadow effect. Yeah. Is that a shadow effect? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go, a little grayer. Let me try something. I don't know if this is going to work. If you could go back and change any one thing from Brother Bear, what would you change? Uh, I would change the the voice acting and some of the writing because I feel like I could have done better on some of the writing. You don't necessarily mean the performers; you mean the the dialogue or whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah. Some of the performances I would have pushed a little harder. Do you find the anime frame rate of animation appealing for a ser serialized format, considering the time constraints and topics on each episode? Yeah, I don't mind f slow frame rate as long as it's entertaining. You know, I'll watch a storyboard movie, a storyboarded film, you know, as fast as I'll watch a finished film as, as long as it's entertaining. couple of darker areas in here. And then we're going to call this finished. Yo, Aaron. Hey, how you doing? What's up with the iguanas falling from trees down there in Florida? <laughs> well, iguanas are transplants. They, 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 they've kind of taken hold here 
in Florida because the original owners that had them as pets decided they got too big and they would let them go and then they've bred and proliferated all throughout Florida well not throughout Florida but throughout southern Florida and the iguanas happen to be from places that don't get frost and don't get cold weather but it's warm enough in the rest of the time of the year for for them to survive here and so when we do get cold weather that gets down into the you know upper 40s um, which is a, a, a lot of places in Florida the iguanas basically shut down because they're cold-blooded they can't really move it's like you know when your hands get cold and you can't move them and so they just fall out of the trees <laughs> they're not dead they just they're just kind of they're paralyzed <laughs> my arm is paralyzed can Dustin do a Daffy Duck impression you did a pretty good Daffy Duck the other day I thought I thought it was pretty good you know, you're despicable. <laughs> that was pretty good. I found the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. When you do the S's, you do the S's pretty good. <laughs> Duck season. Wabbit season. <laughs> Duck season. Wabbit season. Yeah. Wabbit season. Duck season. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> Those are good, man. Oh, man. Question. I've always been interested in watching the storyboard version, storyboarded versions of movies, but I'm not sure if any are easily accessible. Do you know if any of Disney's or Pixar's are? You know, it depends on if they choose to put them out uh, um, in whatever... I guess DVDs are still, still come out, right? Yeah. Um, it's... Whether or not they decide they want to, I don't know of anywhere they've released the entire. The, you know, I, I think the old, the old like Beauty and the Beast, they they put part of that out. Did they? I know, yeah, we re, we actually released it to the press, um, way back, uh, in like part storyboard, part animation, and it was really interesting, and it was it became really popular, and so we actually released it on the. Uh, on the video cassette when that came out, maybe it wasn't on the video cassette. I can't remember where it was. Well, the original, anyway. the original teaser for Brother Bear had storyboard stuff in it, and that yeah. was on the Lion King VHS tape. Yes. I mean, that was just you know, it wasn't really storyboard, but it was test animation. Yeah, there was testing. Well, there was some storyboard in there too. Oh, was but, there? Yeah. Or some like sequences that didn't go through. So the, you know, it was a sequence that didn't go through. Therefore, it never got bored. Uh, never got animated. So all we had was the storyboard. A philosophical question, but if for the new Bambi movie they use same technology they used for the Lion King, all CGI, but the hunter that shoots Bambi's mother is an actual hunter. You never see would the it, hunter, but if they if they do bring in a hunter, would it then be considered a live action movie? Well, I don't think I think I definitely think that they will do it the way they did it in the original, which is you never see the hunter. I'm very interested in two D animation. Is it possible to go to college for that nowadays, or does animation have to be three D? No, you can still go to Sheridan College, uh, Cal Arts. Um, they still they still teach 2D. I think you can still major in 2D in, at Cal, Cal Arts. Don't hold me to it. I might be wrong. <laughs> can you animate a scene to one of Dustin's impressions? At some point, I probably could. So I'm just putting in a little bit of background foliage, fo foliage. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to Gaussian blur it just to knock it into the background, just a touch. Look at that. Ooh. Just a slight touch. Jocelyn asks, hey Aaron, a little off topic, but do you think that coyotes and jackals are closely related? I saw photos of African wolves that look similar to coyotes as well, so I always wonder. You know what? I don't know. Jackals to me look like they're more closely um, 
related to foxes, but they they could be related to coyotes. It's a good question, actually. We need to get Terrell on the live stream. Yeah, we do. We'll have a segment this week on Ask Terrell. Yeah. So you can pre-record it. Yeah. I'm just just throwing in little bits of random foliage here. Finish this up pretty quick. What are we doing on time? What we've been doing? Oh, we've been at this for two hours. So the amount of the same it takes me about the same amount of time to do an image in Procreate as it does in uh, Photoshop, and you can see the image is fairly similar. You know the end result. Facebook question. Hey Aaron, I've been an artist for ten years and I've decided to give my attention recently to big pen drawing. Do you have any advice on line weights or how dark you should go? You can go as dark as you want with Big Pen. That's one of the things I love about Big Pen is your ability to control um, your value structure. You can go really light with it. You can go really dark with it. Uh, it's really super versatile in that way. So, you know, knock yourself out. Do whatever you want. Is it possible to major at any college on both 2D and 3D animation? I don't think it. I, I, I don't think it is. Nick might know more about that than me, but I don't think it can. Nick, is there such a thing? I, I don't know of any where it's like a dual major, but I definitely know of tons of colleges that offer both. Like Ringling, you know, you go to school for animation. You're basically it's a 3D program, but you're going to take 2D animation classes while you're there. And I, I would I would imagine that the vice versa exists some places too, where you you have a 2D focus but you probably do some 3d training here and there as well but i don't know if anywhere you like considered majored in both if that makes any sense right. um here's a twitch question do you consider cg movies more computer generated um where the as in the computer's doing the work or do you think it's done by hand uh with the computer i'm trying to see how the you consider CG movie computer generated like everything from modeling and texturing to animating is done by the computer or just 2D animation is done by hands and uh, I think they're asking do you basically think that CG animation is real animation? It is, yes. And it's not you just know, the, the computer doing it. Yeah, the artist work. gets in there and they have to they have to get in there and manipulate the character move it around um, you know the in-betweens a lot of times are filled in by the computer but they still have to figure out those key poses and and whatnot so yes it's very much uh, human do you yourself prefer 2d animation over CGI yes only because I that doesn't say that doesn't mean that I I don't like CG films because I do. Um, I just love I like the art form of hand drawn better because it is more it it feels more human to me. And so that's my answer to that. And it's sad that Nick has to go back to his closet. It was awesome to have him on the <laughs> on the stream. You keep going to the closet thing. You just got to leave that alone. I'm only let out once a quarter. <laughs> no, you're only uh, able to come out during during the summer, but during the winter you go into hibernation. Well, it's winter now. Eh. Oh, yeah. There's a special occasion. <laughs> You only come out during the winter when we need you. Yeah. 
What was the first Disney movie to use CGI along with hand-drawn animation? I think it was A Great Mouse Detective. I believe it was, yeah. Yeah, all the clockworks inside the clock. Yep, I'm 99% sure that that is correct. That was a film by Ron Clements and John Musker. That was their first Disney feature. They've gone on to be the most prolific Disney directors uh, in the history of Disney. They did nine films, right? I think it was nine, yeah. I'm just kind of adding some texture, some general texture to everything. Just having some fun with it. Experiment. I mean, I'm kind of experimenting right now, just wanting to see what uh, what we can do here. Putting some texture right over the zebra himself. Yeah, I looked down and I seen you have the background. Did you bring in a photo or is that actually... No, that's the real deal. I've just been playing with focus and, and oh, uh, great. different textures. These are my these are my brushes too. Everything everything in here... Oh, those are, are our my, foliage brushes? Are my, no, they're not even our foliage brushes. These are just my, my, my custom brush number one. Nice. I just blew them up so you get the texture really big. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's really cool what you can do with... Uh, and these are, you know, every brush I used in this image today was my own custom brush. I didn't use a Procreate brush. So that's one of the beauties of this of this software is that you can bring in your own stuff and create your own imagery, which I really like. I like having that ability. So there you go, there's my image for today. Let's add another layer. And we gotta be able to sign it. So I'm gonna blow I'm gonna sign it up and up here. And we'll just go to pastel Pastel Edge. Let's see what that does for us. Oh, let me undo that. Make it even smaller. There we go. Signed. I remember the last time Let's Nate came out of his closet. That was when he had pixels all over his face. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Live stream. What's the date today? One the thir at one thirty first, twenty twenty. We in the United States do month first then day. I don't know why we do that. It makes more it's sense. Difficult. Yeah, it makes total sense to do day, month, year. Uh, I've always done it month, day, year. Well, well that's that's, that's yeah, year. that's how the United States we do it. But everyone else in the rest of the world, the rest of the world, does ma they do it in month. a way that makes sense. <laughs> what, day, day, month, month year. Yeah, it's small. Larger, largest. Makes sense. So there you go. So there it is. And uh, so at the end, we can go to the mechanics and we can hit video and time lapse replay. And here you can see it automatically replays. It re it's recorded every stroke that I've done. And I think I can speed it up to play faster. Faster, Daddy. Faster. Not sure where that control is, because uh, this is going to take a, a couple of minutes to play back. Um, but there you go. That's um, that's our Procreate. Like I said, Nick uh, is here for the weekend. Uh, he and I are going to be putting together an entire Procreate course. And now that we've done this, I think I'm going to. Uh, I think we should do this a lot more often. This is yeah. pretty cool being able I to agree. do this. And Procreate, because I think most of you out there, if I'm not wrong, are using Procreate and an iPad rather than uh, working in Photoshop. And uh, and I'll I'll go back and forth, but uh, but I um, you know for you guys out there and gals that are working in Procreate, which I think there's a lot of you. Um, here you go. This you know it doesn't have to be uh, really difficult. I I really approach it in the same way that I approach. Uh, my my digital painting in Photoshop, which is just getting a good drawing down as solid as you can, and then putting local color down, and then I work on high uh, shadows, highlights, and then I start thinking about uh, reflected light and uh, bounced light and all that sort of thing, and uh, and that's here we go. And this is uh, National Zebra Day, right? Did we confirm yep. that? Did we confirm that? We did standard? Google it, so it's at yep. least 
it's at least Google confirmed. Oh, it is Google confirmed. Okay, good. <laughs> Google confirmed. And, if, you uh, consider, if you consider three seconds worth of Googling confirmation, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, and here in this I case, I Googled uh, it. Just to review the way the process I did for this specific illustration was, um, you know, I did that white first and got the shadows uh, uh, roughed in and, and highlights roughed in, and then did those stripes on top as a separate layer. And that gave me control later on. I could lock that stripe layer, and then I could add highlights in the stripes and dark areas in the stripes without worrying about getting into some of the in-between areas, the negative spaces between the stripes. And so that really helped me out there. Um, and yeah, that's, it, it was, you know, I, I really enjoy this, this software. And, uh, and I think you guys will too. And it's a very affordable way of getting into digital painting if this is something you're interested in doing by picking up an iPad uh, or iPad Pro and um, and a pencil and procreate and you're off to the races. You can do illustrations to your heart's content um, in this way. And you can see here, I think I ended up with about 10 layers on this one and you can condense layers, but um, you know, you can go higher resolution, which is gonna take away some of your ability uh, to add layers, but I didn't go so high of a resolution that um, that I had to give up layers on this one, and, and, and I was able to get a pretty decent illustration uh, with just ten layers. So, uh, and usually I go even less than that. Anything you guys want to add today? Someone said that they think you can speed it up by just sliding on the screen. I don't know if that's true or not. I was trying to do that, uh, but I'll 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 do that later. So we're we're almost done actually. It's just finishing up. Here we are adding the texture. And there's our illustration, Happy Zebra Day. And uh, there it is, day. done. So mm -hmm. I hope you guys had a great time today. I certainly did. I hope you learned something. This is our first time ever using Procreate and working on an iPad for a live stream. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm going to be doing more about more uh, of this type of stuff in the future. And like I said, Nick is here with me this weekend to create our Procreate course. So look for that in the next three to four weeks, I assume. And uh, we're very excited to get that out to you guys. And once again, we're doing it because you guys asked for it. And so if there's something out there that you guys want that we haven't done yet, it might take us a while to get to it, but please ask for it. Uh, please request anything and we will try to get to it if we can. Because uh, we are here for you guys. We want to serve you. It's, it's, you know, it's my, my wish to give quality art education to everybody around the world that doesn't have the ability to get it otherwise. And so that's what we want to do for you guys. So I hope this helps. And um, uh, once again, remember, um, we've got a uh, plain air course coming up, live course, Ronnie Williford and myself in Sarasota, Florida, coming up March 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. Uh, we're going to be painting live. We're going to have a class of 30 students, so come on out and paint with us. We'd love to have you. It's going to be a great time. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And uh, go to creatureartteacher.com slash SRQ, and you can get all the information on that. Okay? It's going to be watercolor, so you don't have to lug a whole bunch of stuff with you. And, uh, and if you have trouble with watercolor, well, we're there to help you. We had somebody ask us. Uh, they said that they weren't good with watercolor, and they asked if they could work digitally. And although I respect that question, <laughs> um, the whole point of this is for you guys to work in watercolor. And if you're not good with it, it's your chance to learn. And so that's what we, we would rather, if you guys want to come out and join us, we would rather you paint in the medium that we're teaching so that we can give you something that's a little bit more fulfilling. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, I cannot believe I forgot to mention this at the top of the thing because I'm so uh -oh. used to typing. But yeah. uh, we have a 50% off sale on all of our brushes today. Oh, so. that's the other thing. So you saw me using my brushes. Uh, these are my custom brushes. And uh, we forgot to mention earlier that we have a 50% sale going on today at CreatureArtTeacher.com on all of our brushes. And I've got all kinds of cool brushes. I've got brushes where you can paint foliage. I've got brushes that allow you to paint hair. I've got brushes that allow you to paint water and all kinds of really cool stuff. Debris, uh, uh, dust and dirt and snow and rain. And So go on over and check them all out. They're really cool. And then I've got regular drawing uh, brushes, and which I use today. Um, these are all my own brushes that you saw me use today in creating this zebra. Uh, they're very cool, and um, I think you guys would enjoy them. So, uh, and then lastly, go on over and check out our Patreon page. 
where you can uh, donate and get some benefits from that. You'll get free prints and uh, or images that you can download and a lot of different rewards that we offer. And, uh, and every little bit helps us uh, down the road. So go over to uh, uh, patreon.com slash Aaron Blaze Art. All right. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, am I missing anything? All right. So I had a great time today, you guys. Um, once again, we'll be doing a lot more uh, Procreate in the future. Uh, take what you've learned today and go out and put some beauty back into the world. That's what we do as artists. Be nice to somebody. Put your shopping cart away. And I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And we will see you guys next time. Until next time, Cowboy Bebop. Nick? And, um, yeah, uh, I got to go back to the storage bin there. <laughs> uh, so until next time, uh, just assume I said some witty catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> see ya.